So today I'm going to be doing a reptile room tour. I've been wanting to do one of these for a while, just haven't taken the time to do it. So I had a little extra time today, so why not? So first I'm going to be talking about my Plains Hognose snake. This is Gerald. I got Gerald about five months ago, and honestly this is one of the coolest pet snakes. He's pretty handleable for the most part, likes to squirm around a little bit, but honestly, I mean, this is a really handleable snake. He never tries to bite me, he's never musked on me. Like I said, super handleable snake. Squirms around a little bit, but you can kind of expect that with most younger snakes. Gerald was actually on live rodents whenever I got him, and quickly switched over to Frozen Thought actually, so I've been very happy with that. There are some times when he will refuse a meal, but usually it's not more than two weeks, so. I've had really good luck with this snake. It's a beautiful snake. Just a normal type Plains Hognose snake. Super cool snake. I definitely recommend these as a pet snake. I would probably put it in my top five for best pet snakes. And yeah, that's Gerald. Right now I just have him in a 20 gallon enclosure. He seems to do fine with it. At first he was hiding a lot, but as he's gotten older and more comfortable in his enclosure, he seems to roam a lot more. He's out a lot more during the day now. At first he would just come out during the morning hours whenever the sun first came up, but now he's, I can see him out a lot throughout the day basking under the bulb. Even if he's not basking, he seems to like this spot a lot. But hognose snakes are one of those snakes that don't get super big, so this is probably fine for now. One other thing about my Plains hognose snake is that he loves these moss caves. If you've never seen these before and you're a snake owner, I highly, highly recommend at least giving these to your snake as an option. About 50% of my snakes will stay curled up in this moss cave for hours at a time. Some of them don't seem interested in it at all, but some of them love it. So I love this snake. These are really, really awesome animals, and that's Gerald. So the next snake I want to talk about is Phyllis. Phyllis is a normal Puebloan milk snake and is definitely one of my favorite pet snakes. At first when I got this snake he would musk on me. It was pretty squirmy and like I said you can expect that from a lot of younger snakes but as this snake has gotten older it's become super handleable. So I'd say milk snakes are definitely on my top five list of best pet snakes. This one is so handleable. It never musks on me. It's never bitten me. I think this is one of my only pet snakes that's never even tried to bite me when it was younger. So yeah, Phyllis is awesome. Phyllis has that red, black, and white coloration. And like you've probably heard before, some people will say, red against black, okay Jack, red against yellow, kill a fellow. That's not always the case, so don't always go by that. But in this case, Phyllis does have red against black, and it's completely harmless. Like the Plains Hognose snake that I showed you and all of my other snakes, they're all harmless snakes. Now I have Phyllis in a 40 gallon enclosure right now. There's a lot of space that's really unused on the upper half of it, so I built this PVC thingamabob, I don't know what you want to call it, and that gives her the option to either climb around inside the PVC pipe or above it, and really it gives her an option to use more space in the enclosure. I may or may not do this for my other snakes and give them that option at least, but it's just an idea I had recently, so I built this over the weekend. And next up we have Clarence. Clarence is a blue-eyed Lucy ball python, which means she has blue eyes and is leucistic. So this snake has actually survived mites, not once, not twice, but three times. How did this snake get mites three times? I'm honestly not sure. I did go to a reptile expo and when I came back it was probably a couple months later when we discovered that this snake had mites. I completely gutted the tank, got rid of everything, started all over, and guess who got mites again a couple months later? I did the same thing gutted the tank, soaked it in water, I used cleaner on it, I threw away all of the old hides and put new substrate in the enclosure, I put new hides in the enclosure, and guess what? Clarence got mites for the third time. That was about a year and a half ago. Clarence has been mite free since then and it's a pretty awesome snake. Now Clarence does hide a lot, which is expected with a lot of snakes like these ball pythons, which is fine, um, but look how beautiful this snake is. It's just white. How cool is that? Clarence loves to sit on the edge of this cork at night and hunt. He'll stick under there and if you open the lid whenever he's in that position, he'll start shaking like he's ready to eat a mouse. But for the most part, Clarence just stays under this cork. Doesn't really move much, just stays above where the heat mat is and enjoys life. This is a super handleable snake. Also in my top five for best pet snakes. Ball pythons are awesome. They can be kind of difficult to feed at first, and they can be a little bit picky at times, but through my experience, the three ball pythons that we have have became 
much, much better eaters after about a year of having. They become much more comfortable in their enclosure and in their environment. We can feed these snakes in their enclosures, outside of their enclosures. They never refuse a meal anymore. So this is my Kenyan sand boa, Sandra. She's fairly new to me. I've only had her for a about six months now but honestly she quickly became one of my favorite pet snakes like all of them so <laughs> she can be a little bit defensive at first she does kind of bite from time to time but usually after she's in your hands for a few minutes she completely calms down now i chose this specific kenyan sand boa because it's a normal kenyan sand boa and i think the normals are the most beautiful that's just my opinion there's some really cool morphs of sand boas out there but this one's just my favorite now sandra is only in a 10 gallon enclosure right now she doesn't really need much because she is obviously super tiny and won't get very big, but in the future I will move her up to a 20 gallon probably at least. I don't have too much of an issue with Sandra eating. She will refuse her mouse from time to time if I try feeding a mouse to her with tongs. Usually I'll take Sandra out of her enclosure and place her in a smaller container with a frozen thawed pinky mouse, and if I just leave her in there with it, she'll usually consume it within 30 minutes or so. But she usually won't take a mouse straight off of the tongs from me. Most of the time, Sandra is hidden under the sand. Doesn't come out during the day really at all. I don't think I've ever seen her out during the day. But you can see her face poking out from under the sand during the day. During the nighttime, I'll see her start to come out not long after it gets dark. But she doesn't really seem to stay out for long. This is a super beautiful pet snake. I love these as pet snakes. Sand boas are so awesome. You don't see them a whole lot. But when you do, I mean, they're super cool to look at. They're friendly for the most part, depending on the individual. And I also definitely recommend these as a pet snake. So this is Gladys. Gladys is another one of my corn snakes. And this is about as big as she's going to get. Or he. I think it's actually he. So Gladys was a rescue corn snake. A friend of a friend was taking care of her and didn't know how to take care of her. The person that was supposed to pick the snake up after they got back from vacation or whatever didn't show up. So this super long, pretty big snake was in a little 20 gallon enclosure surrounded by her own poop. She had some stuck shed at one point which caused this little notch in her tail. Um, she was not in good conditions at all so we got her a 60 gallon enclosure. She, she seems to do pretty well in it. Honestly she could use a bigger enclosure, even bigger than the 60 gallon. But she's definitely happier than she was before. She was wheezing when we first got her. Who knows what kind of infection or whatever she may have had. Luckily she got it over pretty quick. We didn't end up having to take her to a vet or anything like that. But yeah, Gladys is an awesome snake. She is very handleable. She likes to move around. She really loves moving around in her enclosure and hunting. And most of the time we find her just hiding under this cork, kind of like the ball pythons. But a super beautiful snake. As far as I know, this is an Amel Motley morph corn snake. Really beautiful orange pattern and coloration. And yeah, I love this snake. This is, like I said, this is a rescue snake. Um, we didn't plan on getting this snake, but it was in horrible conditions, so we took it in. A 20 gallon enclosure was what she was living in, surrounded by her own poop. There were probably five or six piles of her poop. It smelled horrible, she was wheezing, she had stuck shed, she has a little ring around her tail, almost cut off the tip of her tail. Um, if you can't take care of a snake, don't try to do it. Take it to somebody that can. This was a really sad situation, but she seems to be doing really well now. I realized about halfway through this that I could talk about these snakes all day long, and just to shorten this video up, I'm probably going to keep it pretty short. I could talk about these guys all day. So this is Stanley. Stanley is my California king snake. He's a uh, almost 50-50 white and black. And this is the first snake I actually got off of Morph Market. I really recommend using Morph Market if you're looking for a pet snake. There are a lot of really reputable breeders on there and it's a pretty smooth and easy to use service. I'm not sponsored by Morph Market in any way whatsoever, but I really enjoy getting on there. So, Stanley is my California King Snake, and out of all the snakes that I have, I would say this one is probably the most defensive. This snake will bite from time to time. He's gotten a lot more calmed down as he's gotten older, as you can see. I mean, if he finds the tip of my finger, he might try to bite it, but usually if he stays away from the end of my finger, he's fine. But he's a super hungry snake. He loves to eat. He's super aggressive towards food, and yeah, I highly, highly recommend king snakes as a pet snake. 
There are so many different king snakes out there. They're so awesome. They're awesome to handle. They're awesome to look at. There's so many different morphs of these snakes. California king snakes are one of the most popular king snakes in the pet trade. And I can completely understand why. I mean, look how cool the snake is. It's handleable. It doesn't bite for the most part. It's gotten a lot better as it's gotten older. When it was younger, it liked to bite me a lot. It was always hungry, always looking for food. It gets fed well, but for whatever reason, he would just always bite the tips of my fingers. But don't let that scare you away from getting a California king snake. They're definitely not all like that. This is a male. I'm not 100% sure what the differences are between the males and the females when it comes to how aggressive they are towards food and how much they might strike at you or possibly bite you from time to time but with all of my snakes like i mentioned before whenever they were younger they were a lot more defensive and most of the times when i've taken a bite from one of my pet snakes it's whenever they were young right after i got them and they would musk a lot but now most of my snakes don't musk at all they might shake their tail from time to time do that little funny defensive behavior but these are really cool pet snakes stanley is also in a 20 gallon enclosure right now but i will be moving him up probably next month in fact probably in about two weeks stanley is a super active snake uses every inch of his enclosure and i want to make sure he has the best life possible so i'm going to move him up to at least a 40 gallon next month and then possibly up larger to a 60 gallon or more later in the future. This snake isn't quite as long as the enclosure, but like I've said in previous videos, I like to keep an enclosure where the snake can completely stretch out. The enclosure's length needs to be at least the length of the snake. So this is Bucky. Bucky is one of two normal type ball pythons that I have, and Bucky is the bigger of the two normals that I have. I have Bucky and I have Steve. Steve skipped out on a few meals whenever he was younger. Bucky pretty much never skipped a meal, so he's gonna be bigger. So. These are another one of the great beginner pet snakes. These are super handleable snakes. In fact, I would say these might be the most handleable snakes. As you can tell, they don't really squirm around a whole lot. I mean, they, they move a little bit, but they're really good snakes for just kind of hanging out. Like I said, Bucky is a normal type ball python. There are thousands of different morphs of ball pythons, but like I said earlier with the sand boa, the normals are kind of my favorite sometimes. Like I said, Bucky's never really missed a meal. Bucky's a great eater. He spends most of his time hiding under the cork on the warm side of the enclosure, just like Clarence, and yeah, that's Bucky. Bucky's currently in a 40 gallon enclosure, but will definitely be moved up as he gets older. So this is Steve. Steve is the smaller of the two normal type ball pythons that I have. Like I mentioned, Steve skipped a few meals whenever he was younger, so he's got some catching up to do with Bucky, but he's still a pretty big ball python for his age. Like I said, these are really, really handleable animals. They don't move around a whole lot, and when they do, they don't move around very fast. When we first got Steve, he skipped out on eating for about a month, and then he would eat a meal eat another meal a couple weeks later and he might skip another four or five weeks. Ever since then, he's been eating really well every 10 to 14 days and really doesn't skip a meal. So for new owners of pet snakes, that's something that can be kind of intimidating. A lot of people really recommend ball pythons for first snakes, but you definitely want to consider the stress of them refusing meals from time to time. Like Bucky, Steve is in a 40 gallon enclosure right now, but also when he gets older, he'll be moved up to a bigger enclosure. He also spends most of his time under his hide on the side where the heat is. Now you might find these snakes roaming around their enclosure from time to time, but for the most part, they just stay in the same place. I've never had one of these snakes bite me. They've never musked on me or anything like that, like some of the colubrids that I have. And these are really cool animals. So this is Gregory, and unfortunately the day I decided to film this, Gregory is in shed. So he's not quite as vibrant as he usually is, but this is a really, really beautiful snake. So I'll try to pop up some more footage from earlier in the year where you can really tell how beautiful the snake is, but this is definitely one of my most beautiful snakes. Gregory is an amelanistic corn snake, which means basically he lacks the pigment that makes black. Like many of my other snakes, and like I mentioned earlier, whenever most of these snakes are younger, they're a little more squirmy and they tend to musk, but Gregory has definitely started to grow out of that. As you can see, he's a little squirmy, but he's pretty handleable still. He doesn't musk anymore, and just a really cool snake. Here's some footage of him whenever he's not in shed, and as you can see, he's a super beautiful snake. Gregory's currently in a 20 gallon, but is next on the list along with Stanley to be moved up to a 40 gallon next month. He's not quite the length 
of the enclosure yet, but he's getting there, so I definitely want to move him up pretty quickly. Now, Gregory is a great eater. I don't think Gregory's ever skipped out on a meal. And one thing about Gregory is he is always hiding. He does come out during the nighttime, right after it gets dark. You'll see him start to cruise around his enclosure, searching for food or doing whatever snakes do, you know, but I don't think I've ever seen Gregory poke his head out during the day. So this is Hamilton. Hamilton is my snow morph corn snake. And this was actually the second or third snake that I got. As you can see, Hamilton is an albino type corn snake, mostly white. Now, Hamilton, very similar to Gregory, only comes out at night. I never see Hamilton during the day. And one other thing I want to mention is this is another one of the snakes that loves those moss caves. I have a moss cave hanging from Hamilton's enclosure, and a lot of times I'll find him hiding in there for many hours at a time. He'll poke his little head over the edge, and it's pretty cute. But I do see him exploring his enclosure from time to time during the nighttime. Hamilton is in a 40-gallon enclosure right now, which is probably what he'll be in for the next few years. He might be pushed up to a 60-gallon in the future, depending on how big he gets. Hamilton is fairly handleable. It's one of the more squirmy snakes that I have. These younger snakes can be squirmy, like I've mentioned several times now, but Hamilton has definitely started to grow out of that when it comes to just flailing around all over the place. I can at least handle him now. This is another one of the snakes that's never really tried to bite me, maybe once whenever I first had him, but overall a handleable snake, doesn't musk on me anymore, eats very very well, and would definitely be a good beginner snake. Now this is Margo. Margo is actually my first pet snake that I've had. I love this snake. She's super handleable, has always been very handleable. Never really misses a meal. I have noticed if I try to feed her a little early, like five to seven days after her last meal, she will refuse, but is definitely hungry and hunting a few days after that. I got Margot from a friend of a friend who can no longer take care of her, and this person claims to have gotten her from a reptile expo in Florida who had her marked as a corn snake. I do still believe she's a corn snake, but she has some weird things going on with her pattern, her color, and kind of the lack of a head stamp that makes me think she might be some type of a gulf hammock rat snake or maybe a hybrid between a corn snake and a gulf, ha gulf hammock rat snake. Margo has only bitten me once and that was the very first day I had her. I was holding her and my dog came up and decided to check it out. The dog got a little too close. Margo ended up latching onto my lip. So yeah, that was fun. She's not a super big snake, especially for a corn snake. I mean, this is a snake that is several years old, and you can tell that's not a very wide body at all, so I'm not sure if she was underfed or if she might actually be another species. Like I said, possibly a gulf hammock rat snake, so definitely an interesting snake. This snake has given me zero issues and overall a great pet. So this is Debra. Debra is my mosaic Florida king snake. Debra is probably my first or second most handleable snake outside of the ball pythons. And of course she is also in shed today when I decided to film, so I'm gonna try to make this pretty short so I don't bother her too much. I got Debra from a local pet store and when I first started handling her, I thought something might be wrong with her, but that was just her temperament. She's just super, super chill, super handleable. As you can see, she doesn't really get in too big of a hurry to do anything. She eats really, really well. She used to musk on me at first and she'll still kind of shake her tail from time to time, but she's gotten over the musking for the most part, it seems like. Like I said, she eats really, really well, super handleable. And she's got this super cool pattern. Like I said, she's a mosaic Florida king snake, so she has this kind of random pattern on her. Oh, there she goes shaking her tail. This is a really awesome snake. I love king snakes and I love the Lampropeltis genus in general, so this is definitely up there with some of my favorite snakes just like all the other ones. Debra is currently in a 20 gallon enclosure and she's one of the three snakes that'll be moving up to at least a 40 gallon here next month, along with Stanley and Gregory. Debra has struck at me maybe twice. I don't think she's ever actually bitten me before, but I mean, usually if you know what you're doing, if you're not really poking at them or doing anything wrong, they're not gonna bite you. For the most part, Debra stays hidden. I do see her first thing in the morning and then right after it gets dark, I'll see her exploring her enclosure, but she likes to stay hidden for the most part. So this is Georgia. Georgia is an albino Nelson's milk snake. I've been wanting to get an albino Nelson's milk snake for years now. I've never really just pulled the trigger on it. I saw a really good deal on this one. It's a beautiful, healthy snake. 
and so I went ahead and got it. This is a super tiny snake, but it is eating frozen thawed rodents right now. I believe it was started on live pinkies, but I got it switched over pretty quick to frozen thawed. I currently only have this snake in a 10 gallon enclosure because, I mean, look how teeny tiny it is. But whenever I move up my other snakes to 40s next month, I'm going to move this one to a 20. And then eventually it'll probably get a 40 as well. The temperament of this snake is awesome. I mean, it's super similar to Phyllis, my Playboy and Milk Snake. Milk snakes in general are just great pets, I feel like. This one's really awesome. Phyllis is really awesome. For the most part, the Lampropeltis genus makes some really good pet snakes. There are some exceptions here and there, and you'll just want to make sure you do your research before purchasing an animal like this. This is an albino snake, and I mean, look how beautiful that is. That's a really pretty snake. This snake has already eaten twice for me, and has shed once. It's doing super well, and I'm super excited to have this snake. This is one that I've been wanting for a while, like I mentioned, and I finally got it, so say hi to Georgia. These snakes have this super cool red, yellow, and pinkish pattern. Like I said, she's an albino, so that's where you get that pinkish color. Normally they would be a red, yellow, and a black sort of a color. There are many different morphs of milk snakes, and this is one of my favorite ones. This is Timothy. Timothy is my only wild-caught snake, and obviously a little feisty. He's still getting used to me. He is a common garter snake, a beautiful, beautiful snake. I mean, look at that red coloration. That is incredible. Isn't this a beautiful snake? A common garter snake. This one was found in Kansas. This one was a wild-caught snake. He's a little crazy whenever you first handle him, but as you can see, he's starting to calm down now. He'll be kind of bitey at first and pretty squirmy, and he still is a little bit, but he's starting to calm down. Now, the really cool thing about these snakes is that they don't eat just rodents. I feed Timothy a varied diet. One week I might feed him a frozen thawed fuzzy mouse. And then the next week, I might feed him some earthworms. I also feed him tilapia, and he seems to eat just about everything. I tried some feeder guppies. He didn't really take on those. But yeah, if I'm feeding him a rodent, I'll feed him once a week. If I'm feeding him worms or tilapia and or tilapia, I'll do that twice a week. Timothy is a male garter snake. The females get quite a bit bigger. The cool thing about these snakes is you can cohab them. You can keep more than one garter snake in the same enclosure. They seem to do really well with other garter snakes around them. They seem to be more confident and safe with other garter snakes around them. So I actually plan to get another one to put with Timothy. But look at that coloration. Isn't that incredible? And these are the snakes you just find in your backyard. <laughs> you won't stop striking at me. He's not happy. But I'm still working with him, getting him to calm down a little bit. And he'll get there. Right now he's just in a 20 gallon enclosure. Like with a lot of my other ones, they're temporary. They're fairly new snakes that I have and they will get moved to a bigger enclosure as they get older. I mostly just have some of my snakes in smaller enclosures because it's what I already had and it's plenty big enough for the size of the snake and how old the snake already is. Once they get older, I'll for sure have them in bigger enclosures. So yeah, that's Timothy. Isn't that incredible? He actually just freshly shed about five days ago, so he is looking good. Last but not least, I'll talk a little bit about our frilled lizards that we have. These are younger frilled lizards. They are still quite squirmy, but I'll talk about them for a little bit. So these are interesting animals. I honestly like these more than bearded dragons. Not that bearded dragons aren't super cool, but now that I've had these for a few months, they're just, they're super active. They're super alert. These guys have a beautiful pattern. I don't know how much you can see that, but as they get older, their pattern just gets more and more beautiful. They do live in a more humid environment, a higher humidity type of environment. So with frill dragons, they seem to like a vertical enclosure, as you can see behind me. That is the enclosure that we have our two frill dragons in. We have a mister hooked up, so it mists every hour or so for about 20 seconds, or depending on how we have it set up. But we have a misting system to where it sprays water on the top half of the enclosure and there's another nozzle that sprays it on the bottom half. I like to keep a water dish in there on a couple different levels. And we feed these guys dubia roaches, mealworms, and crickets. They're not super handleable when they're younger. They need a little bit of work before they get to that point. But yeah, these are really, really awesome. You know, they will frill up from time to time, which is cool to see, but... It's also sort of a sign of stress, not always, but 
it's not always a good thing when they are frilled up like that. These guys eat two to three times a day. We tried hand feeding them at first and it didn't really work. So we have little bowls now with dubia covered in calcium powder and they seem to be doing pretty well. These guys will get much larger as they become adults. So that enclosure behind us probably won't work for them as an adult. We'll have to get a bigger one, but for now it works great. We have an LED light that's dimmable at the very bottom. And then at the top we have a UVB light and we keep the temperature of around 110 for a hot spot and around 85 to 90 for an ambient temperature on the top. I currently have four different morphs of corn snakes. I have a California king snake. I have a Kenyan sand boa. I have a Pueblan milk snake. I have two normal ball pythons, a blue-eyed Lucy ball python. I have a mosaic Florida king snake, an albino Nelson's milk snake, a plains hognose snake, a common garter snake, two frilled dragons, and that's it. So those are all of my reptiles. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, comment on this video with any questions you might have, like the video, and I'll see you next time.